Good evening and welcome to Vespers at Charter House. I invite you to join me in worship and peace. I will light a light in the name of the maker who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for me. Glory to God in heaven. I will light a light in the name of the Son who saved the world and stretched out his hand to me. Glory to God in heaven. I will light a light in the name of the Spirit who encompasses the world and blessed my soul with yearning. We will light three lights for the trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us. The beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the gospel reading. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, amen. I served in Norwegian congregation in Iowa for nine years. It was in this little village of 1,300 people, so I got to know the families well. The population in that Norwegian village was actually one half German descent. But the Norwegians would never let you know that. To them, it was a Norwegian town. And it, they made up for all those Germans by telling me nobody but a German is stubborn enough to deal with all of us Norwegians. <laughs> This stubbornness did them a good turn because during Prohibition, the people of the town never stopped growing grapevines and making wine. The vines lived on, on the back alleys and the gardens of the little town. These are the advantages of a settled community. One day, I came home to the parsonage and saw a bucket of sticks sitting by the garage door. They looked like just dead sticks, but they were grapevines. 
Oris Osheim, one of the charter members of the congregation, had brought them to me. He came over and helped me plant them in the back garden, just sticking the dead sticks into the, into the ground. Oris told me that one of the rules of growing grapevines, first they sleep, then they creep, then they leap. And that's exactly what they did. It was the right time to plant those sticks, and that is what the grapevines did. They eventually covered the pergola in back with the luxurious vines that grew up eight feet and shaded that corner where we sit. And I sat with Oris and Ellen in their kitchen, and I drank wine with them, red wine that he had made from old grapevines. In the gospel today, time matters. There is a time to plant, a time to grow, a time to bear fruit, and there's a time for harvest. This is a major theme in Matthew, one that Jesus teaches over and over, that we are to bear fruits until the end, in good times and in bad. We bear fruits as part of a vine. The vines represent a matrix of support, of life and of love. And that takes time to grow. A vineyard implies a commitment, a long-term commitment to the land as well as to the people around you and to generations to come. A vineyard can flourish really flourish only in times of peace. Giving the vines time to grow, the fruit time to develop, to ripen. I love that thought of time in the vineyard. Episcopal priest Suzanne Guthrie writes about this idea and I quote, here is the promise of aged wine, reflective thought, Sustained project safety, seeing your grandchildren grow up. The wicked tenants do not value the land or time or peace. Blinded by short-term short greed over reverence, they cannot see the beauty of holiness at their own feet. End quote. Another member of my Norwegian congregation was a man named Carol Jacobson, a farmer. Carol was known for making the best coffee in Story County. He had spent a lifetime caring for his grown daughter who had fallen from her high chair as a toddler and was brain damaged for life. Yes, he and his wife cared for her and he cared for his wife until she died. I spent one afternoon visiting Carol in his kitchen, drinking the coffee. And after that, Carol said, I feel like I can see straight through this pastor, and I like what I see. We are lifelong friends. And we were. Carol gave me a gift, the gift of friendship to me, a newcomer in his life, a newcomer in that established community, a new pastor, and a woman to boot, a friend for life. Just like then, we have a community here at Charter House with newcomers, people who have been here a long time. We've experienced the peace of that garden, the satisfaction of having time. There is a spiritual power that lets us tend the garden and to offer gifts of friendship to one another. That power comes from Jesus, his love, and his word to us, his teaching. I tell you these stories today because I want you to settle into that grapevine. Feel the community. Reflect on the communities that you have built in your life and on the one you're living in right now. Take steps to nurture and build it knowing that it is God who gives the growth, 
God who laid the foundation, God who built the watchtower, dug the wine press, and God who provided the land, whether rocky or rich, for the fruits of the harvest to be shared. People of God, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we share this time together. This is the fullness of time, the time of harvest, the time to share the fruits of the field and of our tables, the time to bless and welcome the stranger. We are together to bear fruit. We are together to hear Jesus' word, and we are together to receive the fruits of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray and concluding with the Lord's Prayer saying trespasses. O God of all gods, grant us your light this night, your grace as we sleep, your joy in the morning, and let us be made whole in the well of your health. Lift from us any anguish, take from us empty pride, protect our beloved dear ones, and lighten our souls with the light of your love. Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, Holy Spirit, light of life, shield and sustain us and all our dear ones this night and every night. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Thank you for joining me for Vespers this evening. I invite you now to receive this benediction. On our heads and in our houses, the blessing of God. In our coming and going, the peace of God. In our life and believing, the love of God. At our end and new beginning, the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.